Finally, we have the most difficult one to pronounce, and I'm going to try and do it first time. It's the Thermal Grizzly Conductor North Liquid Metal Thermal Paste. Now, that was an extremely long sentence, and it's also a paste that is for serious overclockers. With a thermal conductivity rate of 73 watts per meter Kelvin, it's easily the best on the market. This is technically several times better than the rest of the competition. If you're wondering, this does have a very tangible effect. Whilst it might not keep your CPU seven times cooler, it does lower the temperature by as much as 10 degrees Celsius, more than the rest of the pastes on this list. The metal-based thermal paste comes with all the tools needed for installation, and it's also worth noting that you need to thoroughly clean the CPU before you apply the paste to ensure the best performance along the way, and that you must not use it on aluminum heat sinks because this liquid metal thermal cooler can leave black stains on it. Thanks for watching. Links to all the products are in the description down below. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments section and leave a like if you found this video useful. And I'll see you in the next one. Hi, and welcome to the Nocta YouTube channel. My name is Dan, and in this video, we're going to be looking at our brand new NTH2 thermal compound and discussing how and when it can be used to enhance cooling performance. Further improving the award winning NTH1, our NTH2 thermal compound uses a new fine tuned mixture of metal oxide microparticles for an even lower thermal resistance and reduced bond line thickness at typical mounting pressures. This allows us to achieve an even better performance in most application scenarios, making it ideal for enthusiasts looking for that slight cooling edge. But what kind of differences in performance can you expect to achieve? As you can see, in our own standardized internal testing at various platforms and heat loads, lower temperatures of up to two degrees Celsius were attained when using the NTH2 compared to when using our standard NTH1. Of course, it's important to note that thermal paste performance can depend on many factors, such as application method and quality, bond line thickness, contact surface and quality, total mounting pressure and pressure distribution, heat load or heatsink time. Therefore, comparison results may vary from setup to setup. When comparing two high-end pastes such as the NTH1 and NTH2, where the differences can be small on some setups, it is also crucial to strictly control all parameters and tolerances to avoid misleading results. Therefore, in order to reduce the margin of error when comparing the two, it is crucial to do multiple applications and average the results. 
Despite all variations from setup to setup, there are three rules of thumb that hold true in many testing scenarios. Firstly, performance benefits show more clearly the higher the heat load is. For example, the performance benefit of the NTH2 over the NTH1 may not show on a 35 watt processor like the AMD Athlon 200GE, but will usually show very clearly on a CPU like the AMD Ryzen 2700X, which can reach 125 watts with a precision boost enabled. Secondly, performance differences will show more clearly on larger CPUs than on smaller ones. For example, they'd be more pronounced on AMD's TR4 than on the smaller Intel LGA 1151. In our internal tests, we only saw a 0.2 degree C benefit on the LGA 1151 versus 2.1 degree C on the TR4 setup. And finally, with current Intel CPUs, there can be up to several degrees difference in full load temperatures between individual CPU cores, especially on CPUs with a high number of cores. Often, these differences are due to internal tolerances of the processor and therefore cannot be attributed to uneven thermal paste distribution or poor heatsink contact. To sum things up, results can generally vary from setup to setup. And whilst you may not see huge improvements when switching from NTH1 to NTH2 on low TTP CPUs or LGA 11.5X systems, with bigger CPUs or higher heat loads, there's a good chance you'll see an improvement of 1 to 2 degrees or more. We hope you found this video helpful, and for guides on how to optimally apply our NTH2, please see the other videos linked below.
Hey, today we're taking a quick look on the Tomal Grizzly Cryonaut Tomal Paste, which seems to be the best Tomal Paste on the market currently. First of all, a closer look on the applicator. You can screw the applicator directly on top of the syringe, and with a little bit of pressure, you can get the Tomal Paste directly at the end of the applicator, which makes it very easy to apply. And in the next step, I'm gonna show you how it spreads on the surface of a Core i7-4770K CPU. I recommend to apply the thermal paste with a little bit of pressure, but very slow. This way, it should be very easy to apply. A lot of people always argue about how to spread the thermal paste and which method to use. I prefer to spread the whole surface because then you can be sure that it covers actually the whole IHS of the CPU. So now I want to show you how the paste spreads under pressure. The glass simulates the CPU cooler and you can see if you apply pressure on the glass it actually spreads on the whole surface and there are no air bubbles so that's totally good to use. Now I want to show you how it looks if you apply only a dot in the middle. It will also work but the problem is with a dot in the middle that it will not cover the whole IHS so you might lose a little bit of temperature on your cooler. You can see applying the pressure with the, with the glass plate it spreads perfectly in the middle, also no air bubbles inside, but you can see the edges are not covered. 